yo 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 what is up youtube doing some uh doing some dual training camp is that what it was training camp training grounds whatever this stupid series that i do once every two or three weeks is called and uh i think today like i told you guys yesterday i want to uh do some more try hard games on characters i'm more comfortable with and whatnot right and uh today i think we're just gonna do a little bit of both of like that and also i want to do like a theme which is going to be a warrior theme for this one and um <clears throat> it's still try hard though because we're, there's quite a few different warriors i think that are actually very strong in this current meta right uh quite a few of them so should make for a decent video and now i did just wake up and i did all right and this is my first game of the day so it might be a little bit rough but that's why i picked gilgamesh because uh gilgamesh is probably like my best dual character right now so hopefully we uh can can jump into this one without any issues i mean i'm sure we'll have issues for a couple of minutes but other than that i think we'll be okay i might miss some gilga ult combos or gilga trick ult combos whatever you want to call them <clears throat> and if you don't know what that is stay tuned i will uh, show you what it is or at the very least try to show you and you'll get the idea from my attempts but uh, yeah, I've made Gilgamesh videos in the past where I showed it and talked about it. Plus, it's like old tech, you know, like it's not really new stuff anyways, but. She is going to out clear me. That is just a fact. Pele's early game clear is absolutely insane. It goes how it goes. She didn't even kill both of the smalls. <clears throat> interesting also in this uh training camp series what i like to try to do is try to explain my thought process the best i can which i may you know need a moment to warm up into that but i will i will try my best to remind myself over and over that that is what i need to be doing all right we have more potions than she does and we have more sustain um in our one or with our one i should say the, the passive on the one so i'm not really worried about taking a little bit of damage here no big deal. He is going to hit level 5 off this minion wave, though, because he got both of those smalls. So, something important to take note of. Alright, we need to leave before the entire minion wave is cleared. Okay. Actually, he got 5 before the entire minion wave is cleared, interestingly enough. I thought it would have uh, taken the full wave in a minute. <clears throat> Alright. Do we pop this HP potion or do we not? The thing is, is, like we have better health sustain, but he actually is out sustaining us in the mana department. Kind of unsuspected. All right, ow, that hurt a lot actually. Oh, does he reach me with the one? He does not, okay. Pele's early game is kind of cracked. We all know this, it is what it is. But the idea is we're gonna scale harder than her. Which is actually a big statement, because Pele scales very well, too. She's just an overall very strong dual character, to be honest. But, um, I'm confident in our abilities. It's just the early game's a little bit whack, because she just has way better wave clear than us, so... Probably should've just went straight to the lane, to be honest. But... No, I wish my jump was up, man. What is this cooldown? Warrior cooldowns, Omega lol. Alright, we're gonna run up here to his blue. Uh, I think we missed one minion there, I don't know. But even if we don't get his blue here, we're picking up our passive, right? Alright, we got a mace. That's pretty good, actually. That is very good, actually. It's good as in, like, I have good stats here, but also good in the sense that I'm actually going to build into that item as well, so... So for right now, we're just trying to survive the early game a bit. It's actually not that hard to survive on Gilgamesh. Um, the only reason I even say the word survive, like, you know, like a a word that sounds dramatic is just because like we're getting all of our our like camp stolen you know the neutral farm and stuff like this is gone the meteor was gone probably gonna take this too maybe even the chester so like it feels like we're being destroyed but realistically we shouldn't die to the pele the only way we die is by playing too too aggro it's like i'm not gonna say we can't die but but uh, if we do die, it's gonna be—it's not because of the matchup necessarily. It's because I straight up just misplayed. He could have ulted me there, although I don't think I would have died though, because I probably would have ulted my feet and then like, you know, pounced her off with it. If that makes sense, because like she she can't walk over the edge. 
I think we mainly just need some defense right now, man. Alright, so she's gonna either miss some of that wave or miss some of this rock. Oh, wait, actually, I kinda wanna get this Chester. I think if I stayed on this and I wing sharded it, I would have got it, but no big deal. Alright, she ulted for it, so she can have it. It's not that big of a deal to me. Actually, I think we do want to fight this. Wait. Oh. Okay, okay, that was actually... <laughs> that was such a dense moment on my part. Oh my god, bro. Okay, so multiple things went wrong there. I was like, why did... Wait. My horrific didn't even go... Okay, dude. Actually, I don't even know if I want to explain what I thought just happened there, because it's actually that embarrassing. I, I don't even know if I want to go into it. Let's just say he destroyed me, okay? Let's just say that. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, he's better than me. He beat me. The end. He's the best. Let's, let's just go with that, because that sounds way less embarrassing than what actually happened. Holy moly. Oh my god, this is spawning. Yeah, we get this bad boy. Let's go. We love to see that. Dude, is it crazy for me to just ult this minion wave? Is that a crazy thing for me to be doing right now? <laughs> I just want to be able to, like, get my item before my blue spawns and hopefully defend my tower, but I might not even be able to. Okay, she didn't really have much minions because of... You know, the fact that we cleared them. So that is great for us. Alright, we're even now. We're actually ahead in items, so... I don't have my ult, though. She should, so... Okay, getting Meteor there is big. That is massive. Because I can heal my tower up a little bit, but honestly... I want it more so for the fighting potential. I just want to keep, keep hitting him with my scepter. Alright. Gonna go clear the blue buff here now. Hopefully he doesn't won this thing over the wall. That would that would make me depressed. Go back to healing this tower up a bit. He could be on bull demon. I kind of doubt it, but it is possible. By the way, a little bit of a sneak peek, or not a sneak peek, but spoiler to what I was so upset about earlier, is I was genuinely confused because I thought he sprinted my horrific because he wasn't slowed, right? Turns out, I didn't even horrific, and he didn't even sprint, and then I just died because I was so bamboozled by that, I wasn't even paying attention to my health bar, and like, yeah, that was just a, that was, that was a moment for sure. That was a moment for sure. I think I'm just going to stick to this. Keep healing my tower. Why not? We'll stick around. Hopefully we can clear. And then back off in time for red. Okay, do we, we even want to back off? He's pretty low too. Like He hasn't backed either. We're in the same exact position. So. Okay, I thought he would do something like entirely different there. That's my bad, I guess. Oh, I should have got a second relic. What second relic would I even get against a Pele? Probably like a Thorns, to be honest. It'd be pretty big. Alright, she got Sprint. Actually, like, given the fact that she only got like a... She only got a Blink there, I mean to say, not a Sprint. Uh, my Wing Shard's actually better than that. This stage of the game, so... I mean, I would have rather had a thorn, but... That's a little bit of the old trick I was referring to earlier, by the way. I only say a little bit because I didn't have him perfectly CC locked. You can actually have him CC chained on the wall. I did not. But I did have him... I did have him CC chained a little bit. It just wasn't like a actual, like, full-on lock, you know? We got we got Jotuns for some CDR now, so we're big chilling. Be right back. Be right back. Why did I go Jotuns over a different item? Because sometimes I do go a different item. Um, the reason for that actually is just we're gonna buy a power pot here. 
it's just because I had the tier one and because I really wanted CDR and I go Hydras in my build typically, just like this guy did, but I don't know. I wanted a little bit more CDR, you know what I mean? I wanted more than just the 10% and I had the tier one. So you put those two facts together and boom, you got yourself a Jotun's. So he ulted away from my horrific. Not a bad idea for him. I was I was not afraid of jumping in place there because I, while he can ult me, I didn't think he would because um, I have both my relics up and I would probably just smell him. He didn't want to start this because he knew I'd probably come over the wall. So we just jump over when he comes around and one shot it. That is one of the Downsides of Pele, while she is incredibly mobile, she doesn't have a jump. And jump characters are OP at the end of the day. Well, I guess we're just walking back to the base at this point. Like, I don't even know what's happening. Oh, I forgot I had a power pot there, too. I should have... Power pot and red buff. I probably should have pushed that a little bit harder than I did, but... It's not like I completely misplayed. It's not like everything I did was terrible, but I definitely could have went harder. For sure. Let's heal up our tower just a little bit more until this next meteor spawns. It might be on Bull Demon right now, which I would be okay with, actually. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's pretty much how that goes. I don't really know what to explain about that one, to be honest. I just, um... I mean, I'm just further ahead than... Actually, was I even far ahead? I don't think I was. I, I mean, I was farther ahead, but it's not in uh, XP and levels. I just had a red pot. And also, I would argue my character is stronger at this start of the game. Start stage of the game as well. So you just put a red pot on that bad boy and, uh, yeah. Do whatever you want now. We love power potions and winning matchups. <laughs> yeah! Alright, so we're not going to buy anything else because we got to get back to this tower as soon as possible. If she, she could probably get it if she like sacrificed her life for it kind of thing, but she might actually just be on bull demon instead, which would do two things. It would give her bull demon, but it would also stop me from getting bull demon on her phoenix. Pretty common play, but it appears as though he is not doing that. I don't really know what he's doing anymore at this point. Especially with these relics. These relics are incredibly offensive and like, oh, well, I mean, okay, sprint can, sprint can be defensive as well, but um, Haley is just an offensive character, so like, she wants to all in you and kill you very quickly. And these relics, I mean, blink, yeah, you blink in, but like, I don't know, how do I want to word this? These relics do not help her out trade with my relics. My relics are built to trade and to actually all in and have an actual fight. Her relics are more so for like initiation and retreating, which is not really how you should play Pele. So I don't know. We're like blink Pele is pretty normal, but it's mostly against like backliners and stuff that you need to blink on. Blinking on a Gilgamesh is kind of weird, although it can have use in situations like this. Like when I'm on the bull demon, she could blink on me, but she didn't. So. I'm gonna wait to ult because she does have the sprint, right? Let's just see if she uses it. Oh, she messed it up. Okay. All right. We, we waited until we got close enough to her to uh, basically set it up in such a way that if she sprinted, she like you still have to get over the ult. Like so, how Gilgamesh ult works is it's a slow on the outside field, and you can immune that slow with sprint. 
but you still go over the edge. And if you go over the edge, Gilgamesh can knock you back in by hitting you with an auto attack or pretty much any of his abilities, right? So she sprinted it to get over the edge, but I was still in range, or I was close enough to either auto her or get a one-off, I forget already, to be honest. It's probably, uh, probably my one, but yeah. Dude, that was a little bit of an embarrassing, embarrassing early game, to say the least. Uh, it's not actually that big of a deal because Pele, I do think, wins this early game matchup, to be fair. Like, she does just win this early game matchup. But what's embarrassing is the, is the fact that I died the way I died. <laughs> that was pretty horrible. That was that was just the first game on Brain Fart, to say the least. And uh, there will probably be, because, like, usually the, how I do these videos is I pick four characters to play. Uh, I'm not pressing this key, by the way, because I'm trying to dodge this guy. I would like to go against a, uh, I would like to go against different people in the videos, right? As per usual, you guys know this, but really quickly, I just wanted to say uh, I, how I do these videos now is I pick four characters to play. And once I get done with the fourth character, if the video length isn't long enough, which it usually isn't, I'll go back and restart from the beginning and go do it all again. Or I'll just pick a couple favorites from the beginning I wanted to keep playing, right? So there will be more Gilgamesh gameplay. And hopefully you guys will see by the time that I'm warmed up, you know, <laughs> near the end of the video, my Gilgamesh is a lot better. But I know some of you guys have already seen the other Gilgamesh videos. I'm just coping right now. But anyways, the point is, I was actually trying to get to this point of saying I'm okay, th that it was an embarrassing death and it sucks. But like, I'm OK with it because it is my first game on and I will get better as the video goes on, as per usual. Uh, these videos are also, if you guys really remember from the very, 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 very beginning when I first started doing them, you guys remember these videos are also supposed to just be a, a day in the life uh, of me playing ranked duel every day, pretty much, I guess. So I'm not going to cut out any games, whether they're they're eh, Well, if it's like against a Capri, I might cut it out. But for the most part, even boring games, I'm not going to cut out. Even games that I lose, I'm not going to cut out. The games that I suck in, I'm not going to cut out. It's just a day in the life of me playing try-hard characters. But for today, it's a Warriors edition. So I'll go ahead and skip you guys into the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry for all my yapping. I'll skip you guys into the next game. All right, guys, we're off into the second game. And um, kind of thought about it a little bit, you know, in the last, like, three minutes that I've been waiting since I talked to you guys. Um, I don't know how well, I mean, I don't think I did a terrible job, don't get me wrong, but I don't know how well I explained myself in that last game, so, because it was kind of just like, there wasn't much I could do in the early game, but I should explain the reasoning why and like explain, like, I don't know. Anyways, the point is, is I'll try my best to, uh, continue to remind myself to explain my thought process a little bit better in this game. I think I want blink beads, right? Versus a donza. Blink beads. I'll start with blink. Why not? But um, yeah. So we're gonna go blink beads. Reasoning behind that is pretty simple. I mean, blink. You guys know I'm a melee trying to gap close into a hunter. Get on top of him really quickly. Beads because Danza just has a ton of CC. It's not even one CC in particular. He has literally every single one of his abilities have CC. I'm pretty sure his uh <clears throat> his three. Uh, which you know what I was just thinking of why isn't there like a thing you know how you can do this with your abilities why can't you do that like why can't I click on him and see his abilities you know what I mean wait oh, oh I thought I paused okay <laughs> wait I didn't pause right did I no okay um well why can't you just like click on him to see his abilities but anyways I'm pretty sure his three like the the the, the circle leaf field I'm pretty sure that slows you the one is like a drunk disorient effect like Bach is all his two is a taunt and his ult is a stun. So you kind of need, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't want to say you need beads versus Donza, but you're really going to hate your life if you don't have it, to be honest. Like you, it's kind of like a big deal overall. Uh, it doesn't look like he's coming towards the red buff, which is fine by me. It looks like he's going to start his blue or he's going to do the stupid cringe invade and wait for me to start the red and the people around the corner and try to kill me. What else can I yap about while this pause is going on? Uh, we have a Master's Board of Shiva. That looks pretty cool because he's purple and this is purple. It's not even close to the same kind of purple, but you know, whatever. In fact, maybe Shiva isn't even purple. Maybe he's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the colors. Man. Okay, we're, but we're back into the game anyways. There we go. I just saved myself from having to edit that out. You know, because it's such a, editing it out is such a grueling process. I have to like clip it and then, yeah, that's pretty much it but it's, it's tough work guys it's tough work seriously it's it's very difficult stuff doing what i do on a day-to-day -day basis very difficult stuff here 
think I'm just gonna go over here and clear the small camp. By the way, if anybody's wondering, why do I go Transcendence on Gilgamesh and like Jotun's on Shiva? I don't know, man. Like it's kind of just like a feeling thing, I guess. Gilga just feels like he uses a little bit more mana. Flash can permanently sustain himself if he has enough mana because he has so much HP five on his one. So it's like, there's not really like a giant glaring, like, oh my God, that's why, OMG. It's just, <laughs> it's just as simple as like, it just, I don't know, I just really, I feel like Jotun's star is probably better for most characters right now that don't desperately need the mana. And uh, Gilgamesh is just one of those characters that I just, it just feels better to go trans. Like it's just straight up a feeling thing, you know? But Jotun's star is very, very strong. So as far as what that just, what that Donza just did, that is a classic case of, first of all, being a little bit too, uh, he felt a little bit too safe with his minion wave, like he thought his minions could protect him, but also that, that right there is a classic case of not knowing how much damage Shiva does, straight up, especially with a red buff, but like, I actually, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of players in duel who admittedly aren't that good, right? And so no matter what god I'm playing, they're probably just going to die and be like, oh my god, can't believe I died there. But I swear that the amount of people that that happens with increases dramatically when you play characters that people don't see very often, like Shiva, for example. This is not a popular duel character. In fact, I almost never see anyone playing Shiva ever. So people do not know how much damage he does, and they get caught off guard by it a lot, and I would not be surprised if that happens multiple times here, so. A circle of life. I thought for sure he would think I was going around here, but he thought quite the opposite, actually. All right, so right there, it's as simple as we're just trying to uh, maximize our cooldowns overall. So we want to hit him with our stuff and then chase because our stuff actually isn't even that long of a cooldown, especially if you consider ship a passive, which is a little bit of a cooldown reset. Think of it like a Genji's proc whenever you switch stances. And you switch stances quite often, by the way, uh, throughout the fight. I'd say you, you, you're almost guaranteed to swap at least once per fight. Um, but also we have the Horn Shard. And as far as my three goes, unless I'm incorrect about this, I could be wrong, but I dashed in such a way that like Shiva, uh, Shiva, when he's sitting there meditating, I'm pretty sure I could have been taunted out of the actual dash if I timed it wrong, but I didn't, thankfully. Or maybe I just dashed out of it, I don't know. But the point is, is Shiva cannot be CC'd out of the meditation state. Aside from stuns, he can be stunned. But Donza's two is not a stun, only his ult is. So, um... Couldn't get me out of the meditation state, and I didn't get caught before I went into it, which is good. And by meditation state, I mean on my dash, the part where I start meditating. Pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, self-explanatory stuff here. Just to be clear, though, this right here, you cannot be CC'd out of that, aside from stuns. Stuns can still get you. But the process of getting to that dash, you know, the actual, the dash into the meditation, that's when you can be canceled out. Sometimes I swear it's like, maybe this is just copium though, like, or not copium, maybe I'm just like, insane, but like, I swear sometimes my Shiva dash doesn't get interrupted by things, like, I swear sometimes it's like, knock up immune. It doesn't say it is, at least, oh, oops, it doesn't say it is, or if it does, I'm just not seeing it, but... But I just know for a fact. There's been times where like I dash and it probably should have been canceled, but it didn't. Maybe there is immunities and I, I'm just dyslexic and can't see it. I keep reading this. Um, it doesn't say he's immune to anything aside from the meditation status. status. So we got big CDs now with our breastplate. We don't really have unlimited mana, unfortunately, but okay. So he just F6. What? Dude, it's kind of funny too, because a lot of people consider Donza to be like a melee counter, but and I'm not going to pretend like Donza can't put up a better fight than what he just did against the Shiva because he can. 
that matchup is not that easy for Donza. Like you're an immobile character versus Shiva, and it's kind of hard to run away from him because he has so many like pullbacks and he can just dance on you and stuff. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's an easy matchup for Donza at all. Um, so right now I'm a little bit, usually what I would do is I would just go to the next warrior. And I think that's what I'm going to do. That's what like, my, it's going to be my normal thing. I'm going to wait for this Q to go by and I'm going to hit Q again, by the way, uh, as per usual. But um, I think what I'm going to do here is I would, I'm going to, after every single game, I'm going to skip into the next warrior with the one exception being a literal five minute surrender. If it is a five to six minute surrender, I'm going to play the same character back to back um, regardless. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to skip you guys into a, another Shiva game for you guys. And um, then after that, we're going to play a different warrior. And if we get like a nine minute game, a 10 minute game, I'll play the next warrior. I'm not going to repeat the warrior. But if it's literally five or six minutes, then yeah, we're repeating it. So I'll go ahead and skip you guys into the next Shiva game. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're off into the third game, the second Shiva game. Oh, we're against Zenobia. No way, dude. <laughs> I don't know if this guy sniped me or what, but a um, little backstory on that. I mean, there's not really like a backstory. I just know this guy. He's a jouster. I've played with and against him quite a few times here recently in joust. And uh, here we are going against him in duel. And he actually messaged me. If I can get my yawns out. Or well, technically I messaged him asking him about some drama that I'm not going to disclose here on the YouTube channel. But um, anyways... I messaged him about some drama and he responded and then he told me something along the lines of actually let me let me find it what did he say let me uh tab out here and see what he said he said be safe in the dual cues oh wait i don't want to read that other part <laughs> anyways he told me he said to be safe in the dual cues and he meant something else but apparently i have to be safe from him as well because he's out here trying to beat me up Ooh, that's cute. That's cute. <laughs> Bro tried to cheese me around the wall. Zenobia, I thought we, we would have a jump party. I thought we were boys. Turns out I was wrong. We're not even boys, bruh. He has horrific emblem. All right, so we dashed through him, uh, which I don't really know if that's actually my best possible clear or what, but the thought process was that we dashed through him so that way we hit him and take aggro of all the minions and also avoid his attacks in the process, right? I'm actually perfectly fine with him hitting me with that. I'd actually prefer him to hit me with that because it, it lowers his clear. And also I had plenty of um, sustain right there, so. Like, I, I was full HP, and I had uh, my HP 5 ticking, is what I mean. If I ever get out of this Bliss stance, though, I'm not going to have any more sustain left, which sucks. But to be fair, he doesn't have much sustain left either. He is going Oom as well. My autos hit pretty hard because I have this heavy maze, right? 30, 30 power is pretty good. Escape the cycle. Hmm. I might ult for some sustain here if I can get enough mana to do it to begin with, I suppose. <laughs> A little bit wonky. But uh, I, I was debating on whether I should just clear the wave with that or if I should use it for mana or what. But we ended up settling on a little bit of both. And we won the red buff fight, which I am perfectly content with. He might run straight to that meteor, which would suck. Honestly, I would much rather I get the meteor, but not a big deal. He might also just go to his blue buff and then the meteor, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. I guess we'll find out here. The blue buff, or the meteor does not look damaged yet, and a mage would take a moment to kill that thing with their auto attacks. So I think I am just gonna stick to my, stick to my good old bufferoo here. Hmm. 
<laughs> I knew what he was trying to do. He wanted to get over there to push me off of it with this too. So we knocked him up before he could get to us. Good gameplay overall. Good strategic play. Okay, he's definitely coming here for either the small camp or the, for the Chesters. Alright, he didn't get any of those, which is great. We wanted to wait and see if he would throw an ability immediately. He did not. stand in range to scepter this bad boy so i could have maybe full committed on him initially um this is the you know this is me trying my best to explain myself here um after the fact uh, i could have full committed onto him initially but I, I think it was a little bit uh, too risky because he had his ult and he would heal off of me backpedal i'd be tanking the tower with no fizzy etc so what i opted to do was just all in him a bit burst him a bit and then back off and go back in with blink i already had the plan to blink in before i even turned around like while i was literally running away my plan was to blink in right you gotta you gotta think a little bit ahead oh bro stop hitting me with stuff i mean it didn't even hurt that bad but still not cool bro He really doesn't do that much damage to me, which is great. He doesn't have his defense item finished either. <laughs> it's so interesting playing against Zenobia and Duel. And what's funny too is I was actually thinking about banning Morgan Le Fay, but I was like, Shiva wouldn't have like a terrible matchup into Morgan. It'd be annoying because she's good into melees, but it's not a terrible matchup. And I wanted to have like a longer game, give give people their mains, you know, like a lot of people main Morgan and Duel. And um, I don't know how how much Zenobia likes the Morgan, but I do remember him telling me that he plays a lot of Guardians these days in Joust, but he is a mage main at heart. I remember him telling me that. And I also saw him playing the Morgan in a Joust game the other day. So did I give him one of his mains, one of his better characters? I don't know. Maybe he just, just started playing the Morgan last week. I have no idea. I don't remember, but regardless, the point is, is I left the Morgan open on purpose to have a little bit more of a competitive game, hopefully, and here we are, going against uh, the Morgan and having a little bit more of a competitive game. I wouldn't exactly say this is a thriller, but it's uh, a little bit more competitive than some of the other games I go, usually. We don't talk about that uh, Pele, that Gilga versus Pele, we don't talk about that. That was a fluke. Wait, that feared my camera, but not my character. <laughs> the fear ability feared my camera angle, but not my character. Interesting. It's like it shouldn't fear my character. That part's not the question. Because remember how I was explaining earlier how your CC immune, pretty much aside from stuns, well, I shouldn't get feared, but my camera angle did for whatever reason. Kind of just allowing him to like get scared and waste all of his, waste all of his abilities, sort of thing here. Be right back. Uh, dude, I was gonna say he might not expect me to stop my back here and fight him, but to be honest, he shouldn't expect me to do that because it's really not that good of a play. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be doing all that. All right, he might not expect me to do some pretty good DPS here, which we should do pretty good DPS. We have full cooldown and a power pot. So he might not expect the, the amount of raw damage that's about to come out of this Shiva here, but at least what I think is about to come out and what I hope is about to come out. Right, 
he's he's not even on a tier three item yet, so we're just going to see what we can do here. Ow. Owie, man. I really need a blink, to be fair. I need to start the fights with blink. And my blink was down, unfortunately. Okay, him getting that was actually huge for him. I should have just beads, I think. Okay, alright. I need to back off here, unfortunately. I don't want to back off here, but I need to. I need to, baby. I don't know what I want to get you next. Probably just a serrated, but... I don't know, Titan's main Shiva does go kind of hard, but this is going to be one of those matchups where I'm either chasing her down and killing her, or I'm running away and trying not to get killed, you know what I mean? Like, that's a lot of dual matchups, right? So that's why, like, I don't know, movement speed from Serrated just comes in handy, big time. I did kind of waste my blink as well, which is bad, because like I said a moment ago, I kind of need that blink in order to actually be able to kill her. We got all those. Good for us. Morgan Le Fay being a, as annoying as ever. Standard gameplay here. can have the scepter buddy he also has the uh red buff right now so don't particularly want to fight into that we are wasting our red pot a great deal to be honest but i mean to be fair i didn't ex i didn't expect it to go quite like this like i thought i was gonna start pounding him but between the fact that he's just a really safe character and the fact that i honestly played up too early like i misplayed those things combined kind of just equal doomsday for your boy's red pot all right, we're gonna back up here and get ourselves a serrated. Get ourselves a serrated edge, indeed. Now this is gonna be a lot of damage too, but I've said that to you guys before and was wrong, so we'll see. I mean, to be fair, my damage was good. I just wasn't using my damage correctly, LOL. Just focusing on picking up these chesters here. Why is my camera angle being feared? How does that make sense, high res? Dude, what an annoying character to go against. Like, holy, man. Like, don't get me wrong, it's my fault, because I didn't ban her. I even knew she was up and everything. I still chose not to ban her, so that's my fault. But I'm still going to complain. Holy, man. I think, like, what's so annoying about Morgan is not just that her CDs are so good. It's that they're on such a low cooldown. I mean, it's not even that they're on a low cooldown either. It's that they're so good. You know what I mean? It's not one or the other. It's both. Why are they such influential CC and damage cooldowns? Like, why do they do so much while also being on a millisecond cooldown? How does that make sense? You know what I mean? That's my problem. You'd think it would be one or the other, but no. That would make way too much dang sense, man. And so we're 500 gold down, because our power pot is now gone, which sucks. Could be worse, though. I'm 
debating on whether I need brawlers or not, because he does have a meditation, a health chalice, and a heal on his ult. Is that enough to warrant a brawlers? Maybe, maybe not. I could have probably beads that, to be honest, chase there. The problem here, though, is like we're running into this issue where we're becoming less and less comfortable going in because, you know, it's like every time I go in, it fails. So, you know, I'm starting to doubt our potential here. It's not like I've ever played this matchup before either. I haven't. So. If he did stay, I can blink on him here over this meteor. I heal the minions? I do heal the minions. It's pretty good. We like to see. Weaving in some uh, abilities to clear the wave, but also to uh, get Hydra's procs and Serrated procs as well. Honestly, I think using abilities for Hydra's is usually not worth it on towers, but if you have Serrated with it, it's pretty good, I think. Logic there being just that you're stacking up. Obviously, you're doing more damage with the Hydra's procs, but you're also stacking up power with Serrated. It also kind of depends on what character you're playing and how fast they can, uh, how, how fast their abilities go off, though, to be fair. Shiva's abilities are not that fast. Actually, that's not true. His two and his, uh, his two and his three are pretty fast, like, canceled abilities for that, um, for that situation. But his one is pretty bad, I would say. Oh yes, a bobble Morgan Le Fay. We love that. Thank you, Zeno, for bringing this to my queue. <laughs> oh yes. Thank you. I love going against bobble Morgan Le Fay. Zenobia. I don't really particularly want to int into him when he has the red buff, but at the same time, like, we do have pressure here. Giving him the red buff kind of sucks, to be honest, but. All right, he's pushing up, boys. Is this where we do something? There's just nothing he can do in that situation, bro. I'll just CC him and I do too much damage. Holy. Ow. Get in there, fire minions. All right, there we go. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory what I did there. We built ability base, a little bit of Hydra's pro Although we didn't use our Hydra's fully effectively because a lot of the times, a lot of the times, like I needed to get my CCs off really, really, really quickly. And so I didn't really have time to use abilities in between because she's CCing. I don't even know if my beads was good there or not. Like, I don't know if I was, um, uh, I don't know if I was in my meditation state or what. But I need to drink some caffeine. I'm getting tired, man. What the heck? I'm getting slumber mode. But, um, anyways, what was I saying a second ago? Oh, yeah. We just kind of bursted him really quickly and then ulted. And by the time we're in the ult, like, he has nothing to really do anything about that. Like, the horrific doesn't slow us. Just decreases our damage a little bit, decreases our healing. That doesn't really help him. And his mid's not finished yet. And he has a bobble for 50% cooldown. But what's 50% cooldown do for you if you can't uh, do anything about the ult, right? Like, if you're going to, like, having more cooldowns allows you to CC your opponent. But if your opponent is CC immune, then you can't do anything, right? Like, he can get another three for more movement speed. But I'm just very fast in general. My character is a little bit faster than his. And I do have serrated edge. Now, I do think Shiva... Uh, or I do think Morgan Le Fay is probably slightly faster than Shiva when her three is active, but she only has it active for so long and she's only slightly faster, right? So overall, he can catch her pretty easily. Shiva does it very, very, very good in this meta. Uh, I think he's a very powerful character overall. Um, that's why, I mean, like I said, I literally looked at Morgan Le Fay before this game. 
Uh, and I decided not to ban her because I thought Shiva could win. Now, don't get me wrong. It was a lot more annoying than I thought it would be. I uh, went against a better player than I thought I'd be against. But again, still, I thought I could win this matchup relatively easily. And I did. So Shiva OP, baby. That's what we like to see. Uh, I'll go ahead and skip you guys into the next game with a different warrior. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we are off into the, what is this, third or fourth match? I think it's the third god, fourth match, I believe. And uh, we're up against another Masters border, a Lancelot, huh? Now, the last Lancelot, if you guys remember, kind of beat my buns in a little bit, if you guys remember that. And I didn't appreciate that very much, so... I think we're going to have to beat this guy down with our boy Surter. I think this is a pretty good matchup. Actually, because let's get Golden Shard. I kind of like Golden Shard on Surter. I don't even know why. It just feels nice with my, my big old sword. Um. Anyways, what was I saying? I was saying something about... Oh, yeah. I think this is a good matchup because I'm just burlier than him and I can get him off the horse. Like That's what a lot of it comes down to with Lancelot is um, can you take his damage? Like, how tanky are you? And can you get him off his horse? And well, that's like some of the big things. And uh, I can, in fact, get him off his horse. I don't see where he is. Is that him right there? Am I tripping? Tripping on gin and juice. He's either... Dude, I swear this guy's either going to try to wait for me to start this red buff and then come around the corner and invade me, or he's starting my blue buff or something. Something devilish. Maybe he was just late. He was actually still in the base. I suppose that's a possibility. I suppose. Alright, he started his blue. I was wrong. Alright, popping both of our potions because we down we are down to clown right now. We're gonna hold our stun, I believe. Alright, so my plan was to hold the stun because I wanted to stun him off the horse, but then he like tried to get on the horse mid swing animation of my sword, my sword, and then he kind of just like fell over and died, so I, <laughs> I don't really know what to say about that one, but uh, I think I think also if I throw an imp at him with my two, it does a little bit more damage, right, or something, passes the mini exploding in an area. I don't know whether it does or not. The point is, is I was I was holding it because I wanted to uh, I wanted to get him off the horse, but he kind of just lost because, like I said, Lancelot is an assassin at the end of the day, and if he can't just run all over you, then you can run all over him. Kind of like the strategy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure a six slot Lancelot late game could probably compete with the Surter. I still think he would probably be at a disadvantage, but I do think he could. Fight a surter. like he, he would have enough damage to burst through his meatiness but no until we get to that six slot stage of the game he's not six slot he's not even one slot so my uh my base damage like he has much better scaling but my base damage and raw like protections and stuff is going to uh do, do me a lot of favors here He did end up securing the meteor. That's one of the downsides about Surter is he doesn't really have a way to get the meteor besides just trying to scare you off of it kind of thing. Other than that, he doesn't really have anything. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to hit this tower once, get a tiny bit of poke, but more importantly, put that imp on it. Putting that imp on it feels amazing. It, does, it just sits there and attacks it for a little while, and we don't really lose anything for doing it anyways, so... Put the imp on it back and get this round shield, which is actually a fairly good tier one. Um, a really good tier one, honestly. 10 protection and 10 HP 5 is very solid. Definitely don't want to overlook that. Pretty much doubled my, my HP 5, just about. Alright, we're, now we're going to go look for the Chesters. Let's hope... Let's hope that they're over here. They are not over here. And the small camp is not either. So the only locations for the Chester is, uh, there is like there, 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 and there. So it's six locations, but it's kind of like three if you think about it. Because the other the other one's just mirror. 
it's just a mirrored version. So like there's three locations and it spawns in the other one, right? So like if I'm if a chest spawns here, it's gonna spawn here. You, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Why is this dude hitting me? You know what? I I'm tired of taking this disrespect, bro. Okay, dude, never mind. I'm so, I'm so sorry, my lord. I'm so sorry, my lord. Dude, Lancelot is such a good character, man. He's, I love Lancelot. So we did end up securing the uh, scepter there. I think is pretty darn good for us. Surprised he didn't go in on me there. I'll be honest, I'm not really that used to getting bullied like this in the early game, and I can't tell if it's straight up just how I'm playing or if it's whatnot. I mean, Lancelot is like... I remember, I remember having a really rough game versus a Lancelot once when I was Osiris, and it kind of felt bad mostly because... Lancelot's just one of those characters, he's a lot like Tear, in the sense of, he kind of hits you and makes it hard for you to hit him. Like, he has dashes, and he has, and Achilles, too, he's like Achilles. He has dashes, and he has CC. So, he kind of just hits you and then runs away, kind of thing. So, it makes it pretty difficult to, uh, to trade blows with him, I suppose. Because you're not really trading blows, because he's not really letting you hit him, so... Oh, please. Oh, my goodness, dude. No way. He actually had enough mana for that. That sucks. That sucks. All right. Wait, when did I take meteor damage? All right. What is that thing called? Indra Scepter Bot. <laughs> uh, dude, I feel like I got the most recent meteor. So you're telling me that statistic is still on there from like a good like two minutes ago? Dang. That's crazy. Alright, so clearly clearly we underestimated the Lancelot a little bit. Which is not something I usually do. I'm actually a big fan of Lancelot. I think he's very strong. But in this particular matchup, I thought I would have the edge. Alright, so he's got the meteor. I mean I, I think I do have the edge again now that I have Berserker Shield, but I don't know, because he does have CDR, so that whole you know, he runs away and hits me without me hitting him thing. More in effect when he gets more CDR, obviously. Definitely gotta pay more attention to this game, though, to be fair. Dang, I tried to stun him off the horse when he came around the corner, but he never came around the corner. He just threw it through the, through the wall, man. You know, playing this game, same thing happened the last time I went against Lancelot. I never really want to play Lancelot when I'm just looking at the god list, but I, like whenever I go against one, I want to play him. I get like this case of FOMO, where I'm just like, Lancelot? Psh, I don't even know that guy. And then I go against one, and I'm like, bro, I need to play Lancelot right now. <laughs> I love Lancelot. But that doesn't always happen. That doesn't happen with, like, all the characters in the game. In fact, there's not that many characters that actually that does happen with. For me, anyways, so. You see what I mean, though? He kind of just throws me off. He's, he didn't even play this engagement very well. In fact, he played it pretty terribly. <laughs> and, uh, he still just gets away scot-free, you know? Probably, one thing I will say that's really good for his horse in this matchup is Surter likes to like get people to half and then ult them and he kind of like can just sit on his horse the entire time. Okay, I probably shouldn't have ulted. That is definitely my bad. Threw a bunch of guys in there. I mean, I rushed straight to the meteor. It's not that big of a deal. I could have just picked up the dual orb and then uh, hit the tower, but... I'll be honest, I kind of thought that he was, like, 
his horse cooldown would be up by then and he was about to get on his horse and he's about to get a shield and I, I was going to be tanking tower so me ulting does two things i probably secure the kill with it and i'm no longer tanking the tower we're out playing him we're looking good right wrong none of that happened literally none of that happened um... wait oh, i didn't mean to go blink i kind of wanted to get beads to like i wanted to uh beads his is two like when he goes to throw me away i wanted to beat that oh i hit him with that like around the corner i mean don't get me wrong i was thinking about the blink too it's probably why my brain auto filled to it the blink's certainly not bad for chasing him down and whatnot i just thought i could have had it I, I just thought there was a better option i thought beads would be more consistent in the cdr and everything but i'm definitely not i, I don't hate the blink Blink value? Blink value? More than meets the eye. What is that? Ninja Turtles? Ninja Turtles? Wait, Teenage Mutant and Ninja Turtles. I'm just making stuff up at this point. If it wasn't obvious, I didn't actually watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a kid, I know. The sin. A lot of people were raised on that, but I was not. In fact, I don't even know all the turtles. Like, I, exactly. I know, like, there's... Donatello, I think Raphael's one, Michelangelo, and then one more, which sounds good, right? Like, I know them, but I kind of don't, though, because I don't really know all the colors. I think Michelangelo is the uh, orangish, yellowish one or whatever, I think. Raphael, I think that's the red one. He's the leader, right? Donatello's the purple one. Okay, maybe I do know them, unless I was just wrong about everything I just said, in which case, never mind, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, look at this auto attack desync. Yeah, I love that. Oh yeah, that, that that feels good. Really fun game here. Really interesting and fun game to say the least. You need you and ninja turtles. Hopefully it doesn't stop my back. I would love to get the Tigers. I don't really know if a proximity ward is going to come in handy against the lots and lots, to be honest, but. Okay, we need anti-heal. If he's gonna go chalice plus a healing item plus cloak, meditation cloak, and we are going to need some anti-heal, boys. He just used his stuff, but he does have a med. I love being able to dismount him. Oh, that feels so strong. I want him to, like, use his ult before I ult. You know what I mean? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I can't dismount him yet. Alright, yeah, Surtur's an OP character. I still want to play Lance, though. <laughs> Is that bad? Because it's not just about Lance being good. It's like, he's good and he looks fun, too. Like, he looks so fun to play, man. What a... What a character that guy is. Have I even used Horrific a single time this game? I mean, I could use the argument that I haven't really needed to, but at the same time, there was there was moments where he, like, beat me up. I mean, I do remember horrificing him back. Okay, I think I horrific him for First Blood, and then I horrific his Horrific to, you know, to, like, make it equal, like we both horrific one time when I was running away. But other than that, did I ever horrific him? I don't know. I don't think I did. Does Horrific suck? Do I suck? No, I, I, I gotta admit, to be honest, like, I don't think this is a secret. I've hinted at it a couple times in recent videos, but I have not been playing Duel much recently, and I really do think, I really do think that it's showing in my gameplay. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm still winning majority of my games. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I really have been playing much worse than I usually do to be honest, in these videos, which sucks, but I don't know. I'm not really too worried about it because it's just temporary at the end of the day. I can't wait for Smite 2 to come out. I can't wait for, uh, which we're going to queue up again, by the way. It's just as per usual, we're, we're going to skip this queue and queue into somebody else, hopefully is the idea, so I don't go against that same guy again. But um, what was I saying? I am saying something. About, oh, yeah, I'm excited for Smite 2 to come out. Hopefully, the, I do think they will put Duel in Smite 2. It just might take like a year 
I don't know. Either way, I'm excited for them to potentially remove bans from Duel again, although they haven't said anything about that yet, but they still could in the future. There's a lot of things that I am excited for in the future. It's just right here at this very moment. Duel content is just not that fun to play. Uh, there's no passion behind it for me, I suppose, and I do think that's showing in my gameplay, but I'll talk about that briefly a little bit more at the end of the video, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and skip you guys into the next game, and I'm going to play another warrior, a different warrior for you guys. Not Surtur, not Shiva, not Gilgamesh, a different warrior. I'll go ahead and skip you guys into that. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're off into the fourth character, fifth game, I believe. We're playing some Osiris. I do think Osiris is a slapper character. Absolutely insane. I was debating on whether I should play Bologna, Osiris, Ama, because they're all really strong. Which one's better or worse? Stuck with the passive a little bit. Which one's better or worse? I don't really care to talk about, to be honest, because they're all pretty similar. It really is matchup dependent, I would say. Um, and Osiris just sounded like the most fun. I also think I uploaded Ama really, really recently. So here we are playing some oh cyrus i think i'm just gonna go my normal star i don't think i'm gonna go like an ability based like i don't think you should really go ability based it's like you know the hydra serrated blah 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 uh jotuns i'm not really gonna do that on osiris like i normally would like on different warriors um do i want to get beads i probably should get beads to be honest but or savages, whatever. I'm gonna, also, I don't think golden shard's better than wing shard. Wing shard's probably better, but I'm a little bit greedy today. I'm feeling a little bit greedy. Why not? So if he's here, we start our three to fight him with. If he's not, then we don't. I know shocker, shocker tactics here. All right, auto, auto, throw, auto, auto. Started our blue buff as per usual. Freaking motorcycle went by my house. Super loud. You wouldn't be an Al Kuang player if you didn't try to cringe cringe a buff in the early game, you know what I mean? It's actually surprising. Like I see them do this, them being Al Kuang players. I see Al Kuang players steal my blues so often, man. Right, he has a blink, which is interesting. I probably should have perfect him there. Dude, how does that hit me? Is that not around the corner? Am I crazy? Am I phys physically insane? I actually don't know if I have the damage for this. I truthfully do not know. I mean, I know I have the damage to do the buff. I just don't know if I have enough damage to get to do the buff and get away after, you know? Retreat! That's what you get for invading my buff and stealing it, you jerkhead. You got your buff stolen too, how about that? Alright, we're gonna wait for these minions to get closer, and then we're gonna tag the minions, and we're gonna back, and hopefully they'll kill each other, is the goal. Uh, now I know I said I was gonna go auto attack Osiris, or at the very least I said I wasn't gonna go ability based, because I'm not. But I'm still going to go Transcendence because ever since they changed Transcendence a little bit and they made it to where it doesn't have, um, Transcendence doesn't have cooldown anymore, it has pen. It just like, what I'm trying to say is Transcendence isn't an ability based item or an attack speed item or, or an, um, yeah, an auto attack build item. It's both. Now when it comes to Hunters, it's a little bit more of an ability based item. Hunters usually don't like Transcendence, but even on Hunters, I still think it's fine. Um, Obviously, I'm talking about auto attack hunters. You know, your Scotties, your AMCs, your Oolers, they, they love Transcendence, right? But as far as auto attack hunters go, you don't really go Transcendence these days. But that being said, it's not like it's terrible. You know what I mean? It's not a terrible item. Um, so all this to say that Transcendence is a hybrid item since it has pen. It helps you a lot with your ability damage. It helps you out a lot with your, um, with your auto attack damage as well because that pen is going to be applied to each and every auto attack. Obviously. So, and the reason why I'm explaining this so in depth or whatever is because I've actually had some people comment on recent videos where, like, I comment on like my Amaterasu video, for example, wondering why I went transcendence because they think dominance is better or whatever. And I basically explained to them, I was like, 
Well, having infinite mana to heal is nice. We love infinite mana. But it's also just Transcendence actually does more damage overall because Ama has so much ability damage, and so does Osiris, to be honest. Having a lot of ability damage, Transcendence is going to help you out a lot with that, and it also helps you with your autos too. It's not like it, it's not like it doesn't do auto attack damage. All right, he zoom. He's just playing a little bit too aggro. I mean, in his defense, he did get that red buff. I mean, he did get the buff. Go him, but. Is it really worth it, though? I mean, maybe to him it is. At the end of the day, who who can really determine whether that's worth it or not? Only the player can. Smile. Reinforcements! I think we are probably going to go a Pestilence angle here. Probably a Pestilence. Because he already has a health chalice, he already has a Bancroft, and his character has... Healing on his passives, so... Pretty safe to say Pestilence is good here. Also, Pestilence has HP 5 on it, which is worth mentioning. For sustain and whatnot. Especially, like, HP 5 is such a valuable stat, especially if you have Transcendence. That's why I like Transcendence so much on Gilgamesh. Because if you have Transcendence, you basically never run out of mana. Once it's stacked, obviously. You never run out of mana, so then the only thing you gotta worry about is your health. And if you have a bunch of HP 5, then you're ba you practically... Ugh. Oh, I missed my one. That was a big miss. Oh, I missed that too. We don't miss this though. We don't miss that, baby. Duh. Duh. Bro, I love that. For those who didn't even know that was like an emote combination, and now you're enlightened and you have this skin and you like Osiris, maybe you don't like Osiris, this is just reason enough for you. I encourage you to go into a uh, go into a game and spam that. It's beautiful. Where is my opponent? Uh, be right back. Um... I don't know, maybe I could have went Shoguns into Serrated, or Shoguns into Exe, and Exe have been my anti-heal. That could have been just as good as well, but I'm, I'm comfortable with my decision. I don't really use my, my passive that optimally on Osiris, I've noticed. Like, sometimes I do, coincidentally, you know? But, like, for the most part, I just kind of, like, play the game, you know? I don't really care that much about the passive. Same thing for, like, Morgan Le Fay. Same thing for Cernanos. I don't really care to min-max the passive. And if you're wondering how you min-max Osiris' passive, it's just basically... You don't want to waste it. You want to, like, try to fight while you're in the passive and, like, try to not use it all immediately kind of thing. You just, like... So, overall, it's just about trying to... Trying to, uh... When you're taking damage, try to be in your passive as much as possible. Just try to keep your passive up as much as possible. But obviously, if you're sitting there auto-attacking them, then you lose your passive. So there is a way to, like, you know, use it a little bit more optimally. But I kind of just ignore it half the time, to be honest. Just play the game, man. Like, right there, there goes my whole passive bar. I don't think it's that terrible to get rid of it right there. But, like, if I were to dive this tower... I would have no mitigations whatsoever because I just used them all, right? Where do you think you're going? Now, uh, do I level my three or my ult? My ult goes up by a hundred damage per, so I think I'm gonna level that bad boy. Picking up this meteor is really huge because it allows me to see him when he's stealth, potentially. Okay, I didn't even realize he had blink. I want to, like, space out my horrific and my ult here. Because he's going to ult me to stealth heal. So I'm going to horrific, he's going to respond with his ult. And then he's going to want to jump away here. Okay, no he's not. He's just going to utterly destroy me. That's good. That's gotta just be a red buff diff. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do have 2400 gold in hand. Let's not pretend like that's not a part of the problem, but 
that is a red buff diff right there if I ever saw one. Alright, beer back. We're gonna go get ourselves a serrated edge. Then we're gonna get ourselves a horrific. I mean, not, not a horrific. We're gonna get ourselves a beads and then I could get a tier one, but I don't really know what I wanna build. I think I'll go straight to a boomerang probably. Right, I don't think he probably doesn't know I have a red pop because he's not paying attention. I want to swap these bad boys around. I did not passage. Cannot stress enough how much this serrated is going to be big for us. Oh, he destroyed that thing instantly. What the heck? We do have beads for his ult, which is great. Alright, looks like we don't even need to use it because he kind of just gave up on life. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe his ult is still down. I kind of doubt it though, considering my ult was up and I don't have any CDR. Although, Osiris' ult is not a very long cooldown there. Alright, we'll just push that in back, get a tier 2 probably, and a proximity ward. And then, uh, we'll fight him over the bull demon here. Now Cyclopean Ring is actually probably going to be big for him. This is like, for those who don't know what this item even does, because it's a very unpopular item, it's essentially magical kins, except way worse. <laughs> Not nearly as good as kins. It never has been, probably never will be, but it is kind of like the same idea as kins. So of course that's going to be really effective against an Osiris. We're going to beads this. And he's just dead. Okay. Now, I could go for Bull Demon here, but he's dead for 21 seconds here, so I think I'm probably just going to clear the wave and then get up in here. Dual Orb this a little bit, although we're not going to be able to kill it all the way with just our Dual Orb alone. Getting up some passive stacks a bit. Resetting Tower Aggro, coming back in, swiping down this Phoenix here. Clearing all the minions to the best of my ability. Proximity warding and hopes that um it would block a couple autos, but it actually blocked zero auto attacks. I actually had no idea where he went there. I was kind of just guessing. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait a minute. Where, where did he? But I didn't hear any footsteps, though. You can kind of hear the stealth character's footsteps a little bit, and I didn't hear any, so... And that kind of suggested to me that he was uh, going the other direction that I'm not currently in, right? Oh, dude, I actually wanted to play one more game for you guys, because I, I, I think the video linked is probably fine at this point. Minus one. Video link is probably fine at this point, but I did want to play uh, one more Gilgamesh for you guys. Gilgamesh game to show you guys hopefully that now that I'm warmed up and more awake, I can play him better. Uh, so yeah, I think that is what I'm going to do. And uh, for the sake of time, because this is already a freaking four minute queue, man, I'm just going to queue again. Maybe I'll get the same guy. Maybe I won't. Pro I probably won't get him again, but because like you said, he's kind of low MMR. I probably won't get him again, but it is possible. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and skip you guys into the next game, which will be Gilgamesh. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're off into the sixth game. Fourth character? I don't even know anymore. I think this is the sixth game. And we're actually in a matchup that I didn't want. I was actually debating on banning. Like, my last two bans, I was debating on banning Baron over my last two. But I chose not to because nobody plays Baron anymore. And most people that do play him are really bad at him. But generally speaking, this is not the greatest matchup. Not a great matchup at all. We can't really go horrific, per se. Oh, actually, I don't even want to say that this is like a terrible matchup. It's just an unfun matchup. Let me put it that way. Gilgar can win this matchup, but it's very frustrating and annoying against a good Baron. Um, so yeah, that's why I think it's not a good matchup um, for the tubers. But, ugh, dude, I keep yawning, man. What is wrong with me? I need to, I need to go. I need to run in the mornings again.
like I used to. That gave me some energies, some energons. All right, this dude is pushing up for apparently, for a, what appears to be no reason. And I didn't really get a kick on him there, which sucks. I really should have gotten a kick off. But I was a little bit greedy. Also, he got his two off, which gave him a ton of movement speed. All right, we jump. He's taunting me? How dare you? You know what happened to the last guy who taunted me? Nothing, because I ran away. But aside from that, you know what happened to the last, last guy who taunted me? <laughs> Stop taunting me, bro. Really starting to make me mad. To be fair, Baron does have some cool taunts. I'll, I'll give him that. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, there has been times where, like, I'll taunt on Hercules in, like, a casual Joust game. People are like, bro, why are you taunting? Why are you laughing? And my, my honest reasoning behind it, like, I would tell them the truth. Why am I laughing? Because he has a funny laugh, bro. Like, I don't know. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure that's not the reason this guy's laughing. But still, that was my honest reasoning was because Hercules with the baseball skin has a funny laugh and I like doing it. So maybe this guy's just like, yeah, Baron's just that dude, you know. Baron's just that guy. He's got, he, he's, he's swagged out, bro. What if I ulted this wave? I find myself ulting waves a lot on, uh, on uh, Gilgamesh these days for whatever reason. I mean, I don't know why I'm capping. Like, I don't know the reason. It's because of the, um... Okay, apparently he ulted too. It's because of the timing that, uh, transcendence. Uh, the timing I get transcendence. Uh, like, I want to stay just a little bit longer so I have enough gold to get the transcendence. And when I stay just a little bit longer, I have no mana left. And nothing to clear the next wave. So I just want to clear it and back and go get my transcendence. Now, this guy, unfortunately used all of his ability to uh, secure this buff here, so... Why aren't we taunting anymore? Baron, what happened? What happened, Baron? I thought we were taunting, man. I thought we were laughing. I dare you switch the vibe. He's, he's got to concentrate on the game now, bro. He's like, oh, oh, dang, I got to focus. Oh, I didn't even talk about it. Dude, we got the same tier one, both Gilgamesh games. That's actually pretty rare. We got tier one mace, which is an excellent starter. The only starters I could think that would really be better than that, or, well, quest items that would be better than that, would be Gem of Fate, which is tier one Predwin, tier one Erendite, whatever. The 900 gold, 10% CDR start, or tier one. That would be better, just for base stats, and it also sells for the most gold. And uh, I think tier 1 Hydras will be better too because, I don't know, generally speaking I'd rather go Hydras before Jotuns, so getting that tier 1 would allow me to start an item that I'd rather get, like earlier on I guess, but I don't know, because it's weird because Jotuns, Jotuns, if you look at the stats, it has flat pin versus percent pin and whatnot, so like Jotuns is a more early game item than than Hydras, but I still find myself wanting Hydras more, I guess, if that makes sense. But against a mage, Jotuns is perfectly fine. I'm actually 100% okay with this versus a mage. Rushing the cooldown and rushing the flat pen is excellent. Now, he does have his ult here, but we have beads, so gotta keep that in mind. So we ulted in such a way, because I wasn't sure if he still had slow immunity and movement speed from his 2 or not, because he did get slow immunity and movement speed, which sucks for Gilgamesh, because Gilgamesh wants to go horrific, and he wants his ult to slow you. But, uh, regardless, as I, sh as I uh, showed you guys in the first Gilgamesh game, regardless of whether they're slow immune, doesn't mean that they just automatically get out of the ult. Now, it's like 10 times easier to get out of the ult when you're slow immune. That's true. But... It 
as long as you hit them with an ability as they're going over it, it's fine. That any ability for the most part, you don't really want to kick people into the Gilgamesh walls. I find that to be kind of counterproductive. I'd rather just stun people with the kick, but it's still fine. You can kick people. You can use your one. You can use your three, like your jump. You can do it. any of those things will indeed knock them back when they're at the edge of the ult. So that's what I was going for there. I meant to kick that minion into the Baron, obviously. Did not work out. We're not going defense yet because he is a magical character and he is behind. He doesn't do that much damage. I say magical like all magicals suck early. They don't all suck early. It's just generally speaking, most magicals are worse than physicals in the early game as far as damage output is concerned. DPS. Now, that obviously doesn't work for all of them. You got Soul, Freya, Alquang, characters like that that dump on you early game. But generally speaking, most of the time they do less DPS. They might have good damage, like they have good burst damage, but they have bad DPS. What's the difference if you never played a game like World of Warcraft or something? What's the difference? Damage is how much damage you do in an instance, right? Burst damage is a good way to look at it. And then DPS is how much damage per second you do. So what's the difference? One is like a long extended fight. They have unlimited DPS. So like a, a high DPS character would be like on her because he has a good passive for it and he just keeps hitting you with autos versus a high damage character like uh discordia you know obviously late game she can spam her 2-1 or with her in her three right but still discordia has high damage but long cooldowns right generally speaking guardians are kind of like that too they have high damage on their uh, high base damage on their abilities and then longer cooldowns so that's kind of like my a long drawn out explanation for why we're uh, doing this because he doesn't really have enough consistent DPS until he gets cooldown reduction and damage. That I feel like I can get away with just going these items, especially considering I'm a warrior with warrior stats. I have mobility. I'm ahead, and I will have some healing with my serrated and my three, and also my one because the three gives life steal if you're in the area. The one gives HP five passively, so I just have enough sustain and raw stats to uh, not really need defense yet, but I'll probably go with next item. So I meant to blink past the uh, snake, if that wasn't obvious. I kind of, I blinked literally into the snake. So right there, we put our ult in such a way that I would pretty much instantaneously knock him up because I didn't want him to react to ult. And then backpedal. Now, he don't get me wrong, a good Baron, like a really good player, could have still react ulted that. But most people would probably be caught off guard because I put my ult in such a way that, like, it's not like he sees it off in the distance. Like, oh, don't walk over that. You'll get knocked up or whatever. It was literally right behind him, right? So. And he has no ult here. Just bullying him a bit. Thought about jumping that way, but I'm gonna jump over here and get his buff. As you can see, I can even tank the tower with my no defense build. So we're definitely not worried about his damage output. And then he allowed us to kick a minion into him and kill him. It's gonna be a pretty simple game, so as you can tell. Using our one on the tower, mainly just because it's, it's a decent little auto cancel, but also because it does give us that serrated passive power, right? So I was actually going to go defense here. But considering we just got his tower and whatnot, I'll probably just go... Actually... I can't believe I didn't already have a power pot, to be honest. But we'll just get ourselves a Hydra's and a power pot. 30% cooldown. It's going to catch him off guard. We're gonna do a lot with it, and we just do a ton of damage now. There's actually a 0% chance he can win a fight now. I mean, I guess I don't have beads, so if I jump into a phoenix or something, but... Other than that, he's pretty screwed. I'm gonna pick up this here meteor, and then go to red buff slash fight him, depending on which one seems easier at the time, depending on his positioning. He is running away, so we're gonna go to the... Bull Demon, or at least pretend like we are. He probably assumes that we're on the Bull Demon right now, so we're just gonna kick him into the wall. He actually hugged that corner pretty well. Alright, we played this pretty much entirely wrong. 
We got hit by his too, which we shouldn't. Uh, but we just do too much damage for it to matter. <laughs> and this guy has no awareness. Does not understand when he is in danger. Kicking this bad boy for the serrated and for the hydra's props. To be fair, he probably... He's probably newer to duel. By the way, for anybody wondering, that guy who got minus one, I checked his profile out. Uh, the guy from the previous game, the last game, said he got minus one. I checked his profile. He was a diamond three dueler. I expected it to be lower based off the minus one. But he's diamond three. And the funny part is he actually lost his most recent game. He had a decent win loss from his history. But uh, his most recent loss, the game right before that, he lost a game to an Osiris, a Tsukiyomi. So he lost two games. He won like five in a row and then lost two games in a row. Back to back to two Osiris players. Poor guy. Oh, we actually would have gotten the uh, Gilgamesh ult trick there. We would have stuck him on the wall permanently. Now, I did jump in, but I have beads now, so... Yep. That's the Gilgamesh dream right there. That's how most Gilgamesh games go, I would say. Just like that. What a beautiful character, man. I don't really have much to say at the end of this video because I don't really go over all my builds. This is more so just a thought process in the day of the life. Um, in these type of videos. Look at that. We hit Cap and Morrigan. Congratulations, we did it. Just to quickly show you guys... I didn't cut out any games. Uh, the, the video started on the Gilgamesh games. Just a day in the life showing you guys me and me playing Duel. I didn't cut out any games or anything like that. Uh, and uh, you guys can also see that I just have not been playing that much Smite. I do play a little bit of Smite on my ult account. I play like casual Joust. But I have not been playing much Joust. More or much Smite. More importantly, I have not been playing much Duel. Because if you, if you go back, right? Now, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. But like this Marty game was a video... Uh, this this Odin game was a joust, and this was the the game I lost as Hera. So it's like th this is my history. <laughs> I have not been playing much. It is what it is. But we're now Captain Amar again, which feels good. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, really quickly though, is that I should have mentioned I was gonna go boomerang this game. I think I did mention that, but I just wanted to quickly highlight boomerang Osiris is really good, guys. Very, 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 very solid. I just wanted to point that out. That was not like a random thing. You probably should be going boomerang on Osiris in pretty much every single one of your games. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I mean, I, I think all I wanted to say here was just that uh, hopefully I did better at explaining myself and whatnot as the video went on because I know it probably started off a little bit bumpy. But I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.